As the Russia-Ukraine war grains into its third year, the stakes are higher than ever. On August 26, 2024, Russia launched its largest assault in over two years, 250 missiles and drones targeting civilian infrastructure across Ukraine. This attack, while devastating, has also highlighted Ukraine's impressive air defense capabilities, successfully intercepting the majority of these weapons. But as the war drags on, a pressing question emerges. Will these tit-for-tat exchanges ever end? Or does the West need to change its strategy entirely? In his latest interview, Hodges praised Ukraine's ability to defend against this overwhelming missile barrage, attributing their success to months of battlefield experience. However, he didn't stop there. Hodges pointed out what he sees as the critical flaw in the West's current approach. The inability to empower Ukraine with the long-range weapons necessary to hit Russian targets deep within Russia itself. Listen yourself what General Ben Hodges has to say. I'm impressed with the Ukrainian uh, defenders, the air defense that was able to knock down so many of the missiles and drones that were launched against innocent Ukrainian uh, civilians. So uh, really impressive how effective Ukraine's defenders have become. Unfortunately, it's because they've had so much practice. And I do believe uh, it is much better and more effective to be able to kill the archer rather than trying to knock down all of the arrows. In other words, Ukraine needs the ability, and the United States should allow Ukraine to use long-range weapons to hit the airfields from which most of these attacks are originating inside Russia. Um, finally, this, of course, is the only response that the Kremlin has uh, to the very successful Ukrainian counteroffensive in the direction of Kursk. All that Putin can do is try and kill innocent civilians in hopes that that will put pressure on Ukraine and the West to negotiate. I, I don't think that's going to be successful. Hodge's rationale is straightforward. Continuing to shoot down missiles and drones is not a sustainable strategy. Killed the archer, not just the arrows, he urged, emphasizing that Ukraine must be equipped to destroy Russian air bases from where these attacks are launched. As of October 2024, the U.S. and its allies have provided substantial support, including F-16 fighter jets and advanced missile defense systems, but many still hesitate to cross the line of providing long-range weapons, fearing Russian escalation. Yet, Hodges views this fear as misplaced. He argues that the Kremlin's strategy of attacking civilians is a sign of weakness, not strength. According to Hodges, these brutal tactics are Russia's only real response to Ukraine's steady counteroffensive progress in key regions like Kursk. In fact, Hodges sees Ukraine's counteroffensive in the Kursk region as one of the most significant developments in the war this year. The Ukrainians surprised everyone, Hodges remarked, referring to their strategic buildup of forces at the border without leaks or visible preparations. As Ukraine pushes further into Russian territory, this bold move shifts the narrative from a war of defense to a war of reclaiming lost territory, a crucial psychological win for Ukraine. But it's not just about morale. By pushing into Kursk, Ukrainian forces are forcing Russia to redirect resources from the Donbas region, where Russian troops had hoped to make major gains. Hodges highlighted the fact that despite Russia's efforts, they've only advanced about 50 kilometers in six months with significant losses, especially near Pavlivka. This shows that Ukraine's strategic decisions are not only bold but effective. However, as winter approaches, concerns grow over Russia's continued attacks on Ukraine's power grid. Last winter, these strikes left millions of Ukrainians in darkness, and this year, with Russia stepping up missile attacks, the situation could worsen. Yet, Hodges remains confident that Ukraine is better prepared than last year. Ukrainian forces are retaliating by targeting Russian energy infrastructure, particularly oil and gas pipelines feeding into China and India. The effects of these strikes could significantly disrupt Russia's ability to finance its war efforts as the cold sets in. While Ukraine has proven its resilience, Hodges stresses that the West's support must evolve. The Biden administration has been hesitant to provide Ukraine with the long-range missiles and fighter jets it truly needs to bring the war to a quicker end. In his view, Western nations, particularly the U.S., have been acting from a position of fear, 
fear of a Russian nuclear response, or the collapse of the Putin regime. Hodges dismisses these fears, calling them overblown and counterproductive. He strongly believes there is no credible scenario where Russia would use nuclear weapons, and he argues that a collapse of the Putin regime would actually be a positive outcome for global security. According to Hodges, the US and Europe should be planning for such an eventuality, rather than fearing it. If Ukraine continues to succeed on the battlefield, it could trigger significant political instability in Russia, leading to the regime's downfall a development he sees as beneficial for the long-term stability of Europe. The long-term outlook, however, remains uncertain. Hodges points out that Ukraine's forces are doing an admirable job holding the Eastern Front, but the Ukrainian government must step up its efforts to expand the military through better mobilization and recruitment strategies. While many have suggested lowering the age for conscription, Hodges argues that the real challenge lies in convincing Ukrainian families that their sons and daughters will be properly trained and equipped before heading into combat. Hodges sees this as a critical moment in the war. If Ukraine can strengthen its military manpower, effectively use its Western-supplied weapons, and continue striking Russian logistical targets, there is a real chance for Ukraine to regain occupied territories and put Russia on the defensive. But for that to happen, the West must give Ukraine the tools to win, not just survive. Hodges highlights how the results could drastically affect the war's trajectory. If Kamala Harris wins the presidency, Hodges expects continuity in U.S. support for Ukraine, with perhaps even more decisive actions taken to accelerate the war's end. On the other hand, if Donald Trump or another populist candidate were to win, Hodges warns that U.S. support could wane. Trump's previous remarks, suggesting Ukraine should cede occupied territories to Russia, are particularly alarming to Hodges. Such a move, in his view, would be a betrayal of Ukraine's sovereignty and would only embolden Russia to press further into Europe. As the situation stands, Hodges remains adamant that the end of the war is within sight, if the West makes the right moves. He emphasizes that Ukraine's recent victories on the battlefield, particularly in the Kursk region, prove that Ukraine can win this war. But it all hinges on whether the US, Germany, the UK, and France are willing to take the next step, providing Ukraine with everything it needs to win, not just survive. Hodge's interview underscores the immense complexity of the war, but his message is clear. If the West overcomes its fears, empowers Ukraine, and recognizes that the collapse of the Putin regime is a positive outcome, victory is not just possible, it's inevitable. With the war's next phase unfolding as winter approaches, the choices made by Western leaders in the coming weeks will determine the war's timeline. But as Hodges repeatedly stressed, the key to ending this war isn't just holding the line. It's giving Ukraine the tools to win decisively.